Whatever you do, don't tell me this car looks like a hearse, because it doesn't, right? This is the latest version of the Mercedes-Benz C-Class in estate uh, spec, body style. And this one is an AMG kit, which means it starts from around 63,000 euro. And the car you're looking at today is around about 70, but you can keep going because you can upgrade them even more with bigger alloy wheels, more stuff in terms of augmented heads up display and glass roof. But this one is still pretty well specced. It's got a gorgeous, uh, kind of tan two-tone leather interior. It's 200 brake horsepower, it's diesel. And actually when I collected this car, it had over 1200 kilometers in range. And in a era where we're very, very focused on EVs, just, there's no real getting away from 1200 kilometers. You get into a car and you kind of go, I could drive to France in this using a ferry. I've had a lot of people comment on the looks of this car this week, the nose, is gorgeous, really love that grill. It just adds a real low center of gravity, well, looks wise anyway. LED high performance headlights on this. I love the black personally. Yes, I do get the hearse thing a little bit, but it'd be an E-Class if it was a hearse. It wouldn't fit people in the back that way. So nose on, gorgeous looking car. Side on vibes, it actually is almost like a mini E-Class. Sometimes you look at it and you go, which is it? 18 inch alloy wheels, not the biggest in the world. They probably could be a little bit bigger for the size of the car. The AMG version, which is obviously extra. The starting price of the car is mid fifties. Uh, if you want a saloon version of it, you get sills along the side, privacy glass. We've got fairly subtle roof rails going on and it just transcends then into a lovely sloping rear quarter on the C-Class. Mercedes do throw in some fake exhaust down here. Do like the LED vibes going on. Electronic tailgate. And it's a weird one because the boot actually is not massive. It's not that deep. Now it obviously goes far back as you can see here. You've got a nice uh, load cover, which is totally flexible. There is more room down here to store things. There's no charging going on. It's just a mild hybrid diesel engine. Although Mercedes have got petrol, plug-in hybrids, diesel plug-in hybrids, just strand, sand, standard diesel. Uh, this one doesn't do any charging, but it will still do a little bit of round town, which is battery mode. It's... Anyway, you got a flat load in for pets, but like it's, it's the attention to the detail. The carpet in that is just spectacular. You know, yes, it's got Octavia has a bigger boot, but it doesn't feel like that. Like that's like a, that's like the good room carpet in a car. Anyway, that's how the boot works, which as you'd expect for it to be in a state, possibly a little bit bigger. Space in here is pretty good for a couple of reasons, although it's not exactly for the, for the reasons of the back of these seats. They do curve in a, give, a bit to give you space. You can nicely fit your feet under the passenger and driver's seat, so you're never actually too squished. Um, but if those seats were back a little bit further, it probably will get a little bit tight. There's decent support on the backs of your thighs. I do like that. Uh, particularly if you do have your, your legs tucked under you a little bit. We have an armrest. There's no access to the boot through it though. Hmm. What's that about? How are you meant to, are you meant to stick cups in there? Or am I doing something wrong? Perhaps I am. I'm not sure though. I don't think, I'm not necessarily thinking I am. You, um, you get two air vents in the back here. And I can feel two holes underneath, but I can't find anywhere to charge anything. Which is odd, you know, for this price of car. You would, you would expect just maybe a bit of climate going on. A bit more of an obvious blank space here to charge devices. But no, you're really not left wanting for anything inside this car. Even the fake carbon fiber is done tastefully across the dashboard. Menus are easy enough to reach. Yes, it is pretty much all behind the screen. The climate control buttons generally are down the bottom at all times. Also, if you do want to make things hotter or cooler, that works. Hey Mercedes. How is, can I help? Works pretty well. That will turn, I'm too hot. I'm reducing the temperature to 18 degrees. Works really, really well. Um, other manufacturers could take note there. Storage is good too because you've got room for cups and drinks and everything else down here. But then you've got further storage back here with an, an additional two USB-C 
Uh, charging ports, there's also another one here for a cable and there's wireless charging down here. And when you're not in the mood of looking at any of that rubbish, you just cover it away. There's a couple of modes, you've got Eco, you've got Comfort, uh, Sport and Individual, much like Audi system for example, you can set up different uh, tweaks. The MG version does have its own sport suspension, it does make it a little bit harder at times, I'll get into that on the drive. I love the steering wheel, it's so classy and you know, it's, it's it has vibes of Mercedes of old, but then it's obviously very modern. Now they have gone for kind of haptic style buttons. Generally I find them okay. You know, they're not too flimsy to use, but sometimes the volume and the music you're trying to listen to, uh, it's a bit fiddly and then it can be a bit fiddly there. There's no actual, like there's a button here for doing that, but there's no, just just a, just give us a knob, you know. Um, that, that can kind of bug you maybe, but there's kind of shortcuts as well. There's a lot of settings in the car as well. So easy enough to get at them. Heated seats then around the door over here. Um, screen is wonderful. You get all your graphics and crystal clear sharp display. You can get your nav displayed here. You can change so much of what you see on that dashboard and here. And it's just a very classy place to be sitting. The reverse screen, the contrast on it, the graphics, the display, it is one of the best reverse screens I've ever seen. Now, if you're not a fan of iPads in cars, you mightn't like this setup, but it works pretty well. First things first, you will get five liters easily, in fact, under five liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, that's about 55 to 60 miles per gallon if you're watching in the UK. And there's really very little you can argue with in that. As I said, a full tank is almost 1300 kilometers. I've been driving this car for a week and I've still got 800 kilometers left in it. As I mentioned earlier on the video, the AMG setup has a bit of a, a firmer suspension. There are times when that really doesn't bother you and it doesn't raise its head at all. And then on roads that aren't so perfect, you do notice it quite a bit. It can, it can feel quite harsh. And it's a little bit surprising, one, because you might expect to be wafting around in your Mercedes-Benz, and two, the alloys are only 18 inch, so it really shouldn't have as big of an effect as it can do. Now, bar the kind of high-pitched whine of that motorcyclist who just went past more the bike than him, to be fair, you can't really hear too much of what's going out in the outside world. I mean, there's the odd car going past, yes, but generally the road noise is pretty minimal and it's not very intrusive into the cabin at all. And then when you're surrounded by such opulence, and that really is the word. Now, I know this car has a few extras on it and stuff, and you know, the tan interior does change what might be a little bit dull if it was all black and the trim wasn't as fancy. Taking all that, uh, on board, but it is still a very, very nice place to be behind a wheel of. The um, seating position, you can go really low down, so you actually feel more like you're kind of behind the wheel of a coupe, really. Now, does it handle as well as the 3 Series Touring? Probably not quite that level of driver enjoyment out of it, but it still does handle very, very well. It's rear wheel drive, 200 brake horsepower, good enough uh, wave of torque, not to 60s, you know, well over seven seconds. Uh, that sense is not particularly quick. Uh, yes, it is a bit rattly under load uh, on the engine as well, but once you're up and running, it's, uh, it's pretty quiet. You don't hear an awful lot of what's going on with that engine. Nice bit of feedback through the steering wheel. I think it's fair to say though, at the same time, it is a car that's gonna be very, very comfortable on a motorway munching up many many kilometers or miles and that really is where it's going to feel very much at home great level of safety in it frontal collision avoidance it'll warn you if the car in front is getting a bit too close or you're getting a bit too close to it it is missing blind spot though and again for the price of this car really should be it should be there you know you'd expect it to be that said oftentimes similar priced audis bmws same thing uh, it is something that I feel really should be standard on cars, and I'm sure in some, in some distance down the road, it will be. The estate version of this car also just gives you that bit more practicality. If you've got a dog, it's easier to carry them around. If you've got kids and they're always going to some sort of training, all the bags just get shoved in 
to the boot and you know it's it's definitely a car that will just be probably quite versatile in what you get to use it for but i suppose you know all that if you're considering an estate version because that's probably the reason however sometimes i find i don't know if you agree that uh, they can actually look better cars in the state versions look a bit sportier they look a bit i don't know there's just something about them pros are very refined lovely and smooth to drive you just get into it that eight speed automatic gearbox just does its thing there are paddles if you want to use them but who bothers one of the areas you might knock it down or say it's a con is just it's maybe not as engaging to drive as the BMW. But that aside, the C-Class is a very worthy uh, car of that Mercedes badge. That's my two cents worth on the C-Class estate in avant-garde trim. It is as good on the interior as anything Audi and BMW and Lexus and any of the premium brands are doing. There's perhaps even bits in that car that you'd say, oh, that was in an S-Class a few years ago. And certainly uh, in the last few years, they've done, Mercedes have done with the C now what they did with the E-Class in terms of a much, much nicer interior. So I think it's very much on the money in terms of what it offers and how it looks and pretty much how it drives as well. The place is perhaps not fully on the money is the price, but they're not on their own when it comes to premium badges being a little bit expensive when it comes to little old Ireland. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions or you want to subscribe or you've got any thoughts on ownership, if you have one, please do leave them below because it really does help, particularly if people are researching to buy a new or used C-Class. I'll see you on the next one.